All right, welcome to Gillette Stadium for the Division VI MIA Finals. And Ashland hasn't been here since 1995. It's been a storybook season. We're about ready to get underway. Ashland in the white, Bishop Fenwick in the black, dark uniforms. And I'm with, Todd, this is Rob Silver. I'm with Todd Carter right now. And uh, we're excited to be here. Todd, nice to have you back in the booth. Thank you. We're getting ready for an excellent game. Super Bowl game. And the turnover's real quick. So they're, they're ready to go. They, this is a machine. Ten minute quarters here. Ball falls off the tee there. Uh, let's see who we got back deep. We got Jake Latessa and Jake Merloni. Jake squared back on the five yard line, ready to receive for Ashland. Didn't look like in the first game the ball was carrying that much. And Bob Thacker just making it into the boot just in time. Yep, I'm gonna hand the mic over to him in just a second. Let him, uh, All right. let him get adjusted here. And the voice it's, of Ashland. We're big time. <laughs> oh. He got locked in the elevator. <laughs> and here. We're just ready to go. The voice of Ashland, Bob Thacker, just walked into the booth, had some elevator issues. Great to see him. Is the game over? Yeah, the, the other game was. It's an exciting game the other one. 21-7, uh, Abington uh, Green Wave was victorious. Welcome. Thank you, Rob. Good luck. Yes, likewise. Big day. This is what the day we've been waiting for. Yeah, we got... Uh, we got our uh, banner out. We got well. Look at our banner. I got a. We got Jake. We got the shirts. We got Jake and PJ shirts. All season long, the clock has been looking forward so we get to today. A beautiful morning in Foxborough, Massachusetts, at Gillette Stadium, and we're underway. It's a grounder, handled. Clockers tries to turn it upfield, gets across the thirty. The ball came loose, and. The Crusaders think they have it. There's Dalloway on the carry. Assuming they are the Crusaders. Okay, we, we kept possession. We overcame the first hurdle. That would have been disastrous. Yes, yes. The Crusaders get, were a little carried away, but the ball is Ashland's. And as we like to remind you, there will be no replays. <laughs> There will be no discussions over the officials' decisions. Whatever the call is, it stands no matter what. And we're ready to go. Very exciting to be at Gillette this morning. December 7th, 2019. They start with a running play. It's Obi Brown in the backfield to start off. Obi unusual getting the starting nod today. Yeah, it's been Lopez most of the season, but he's seen more uh, more time carrying the ball as the season's progressed. But Rob, we know Coach McKay uses everybody. Exactly, you'll see Merloni back there. Even uh, his see best Lopez. tackler, Frank. Yeah, he's, he's been thrown in there a few times too. And that's one of the toughest parts about defending in it against Ashland. They have so many weapons. Clockers have all four of their four horsemen receivers out, and that's Dominic Cavanaugh, the quarterback, the MVP of the Tri-Valley League. His first completion of the Jake day Latessa. is a first down. Jake Latessa. Good Dom. protection there. He had a lot of time, rolled out, nicely designed. Dom, historic. Uh, we got the replays over here, Bob. Oh, boy. That's nice. Wow. Late tackle, out of bounds, no call. Yeah. The, uh, the Clockers uh, move primarily, I guess you'd have to say, although we do run the ball pretty well, primarily on the arm of Kavanaugh and the four horsemen, Gazzard, Latessa. Lopez. Lopez! He's Breaks got it open! Race. He's across the 30, the 25, the 20! They get the Pushed angle on him. The 12, Eddie Lightning Lopez. What a run. 50 yards, roughly, thereabouts. Yeah, they got him at the 12, so 38, 42 yards. They had him at the 42 yards. yards. Scamper, Eddie's biggest burst of the season, I'm guessing. Eddie, the leading rusher on the clock is this season. And who are the four horsemen? Gazzard? Latessa, 
Russell and, and Grover. Uh, you say Gazzard. Gazzard you started and with Grover, G yeah. Gazzard and Grover. Two Gs, and that's Grover in motion. He keeps Cavanaugh it. Kavanaugh keeps it, yeah. He goes up the middle and gets a nice first down play. We'll take six yards, huh? Very nice first down play. Uh, Dom likes to go up the middle. He doesn't like to go around the end, although he will occasionally uh, roll out and have to run it. And the clock has essentially run up the middle, too, with Lopez, uh, Braganca, and uh, Obi Brown. And uh, as good a, we've talked about it before, but as good a running back is, as, uh, well, you have Braganca, too, but you have Lopez, you have Brown, you have Merloni. Kavanaugh's right up there with all of them. Who's in there now? It looks like uh, Obi. Obi Brown. Yep. yep. And got Griffin Frank as a lead blocker. Dom has it. He rolls, looking. Well He's going to take it himself. He's going to be knocked down at the four. Looks like they were going to try and sneak Griffin Frank into the uh, flat, but it was covered well. Now they got to be looking for Russell because this is uh, Russell territory, and it's also Braganca on the ground territory, as you recall, this season. Eddie with a nose for the end zone on these... Uh, yeah. First and go, uh, inside the 10 situations. Third, third Russell and three. in the corner is the main passing target, but I got to believe that the, the Fenwick Crusaders are ready for Russell today. They must have something in mind. Well, if you've watched any film. True, but, you know, the four teams they played in the playoffs have had seen the film and they haven't been able to defend them. It's a bit, usually it's a size thing, and it looked like to me the size definitely favors Russell down here at the bottom of the screen. Let's see what they do. Two it's a third down play. Third and three. Dom. Oh. Thrown behind oh, him a little something bit. Something went wrong there. He got held up or something. Yeah, I think he just threw it behind Latessa. He didn't even get out on his pad and run. It's a fourth down play. Clockers do have an excellent field goal kicker. Let's see if they're going to bring out uh, Agostinelli. Mm -hmm. Or if they're going to go for six. Yeah, they're going for it. Sure looks that way. They need three yards for the first down and five for the touchdown. So Coach McKay goes aggressive on the first series of the game. From the shotgun, three wideouts left, one right. And now a timeout, the first timeout of the half. The Crusaders are mighty happy about that, but you got to get this play right, so... Yeah. Uh, 704 to go. You can't complain yeah. about the timeout there. And again, it's a 10 minute quarter. And right away, faced with a big play call here. Rob. Uh, oh, there's the clock. 704. Mm -hmm. To go in the first period. Ashland and Bishop Fenwick High School from the Catholic Central League Large Division. They were not the champs of the division. They came in second to Cardinal Spellman, who defeated them this season. And interesting enough, Spellman was knocked out by Rockland. Uh, yeah, team the clock is handled. We had a so. couple upsets in our bracket with Norwell beating. Um, oh, actually, I think it, Nor Norwell. Norwell was the eight seed, and they beat number one uh, Cardinal Spellman. We knocked out Rockland. And, and, and the, uh, here we go, fourth down. Three for a first down, five for a touchdown. They go to the end zone, he's wide open, touchdown! Bubba Gazzard, all alone. The fourth horseman today. Dom didn't miss him. <coughs> Look at that fan section. Yeah, all 24 the- 24 years. All the fans on one side of the field at Gillette today. Nobody on our side from our broadcast position. Now Andre gets his chance, but but it's a much more fun when it's an extra point instead of a field goal. Oh, miss Snap blocked. Snap. You don't and see that. He's often. swarmed under. He's still on his feet. Now the mm. whistle blows. So the score will stay. Ashland 6, Bishop Fenwick nothing. Bishop Fenwick is from Peabody, Massachusetts. They lost two games this year. They lost to uh, 
They lost. They played big time schools. They played BC High. I think they lost to BC High. No disgrace there. And nope. they lost to uh, Cardinal Spellman as well. But uh, they played Hamilton Wenham. We had a common opponent. Oh, did? And they I, handled I, Hamilton not. Wenham the, just the way we did by roughly the same score. It was like 34 to 7 was their win. Their coach uh, is a, a grizzled veteran of 20 plus years. And uh, according to the Globe, that gave them the edge. And the Globe had them favored in today's game. The Herald had the Clockers favored. Fenwick has been a high scoring team. They average more points per game than Ashland. They average in the 30s. Uh, and we'll get to see them on offense right now unless they botch this kick. Yeah, the teams seem to have very similar offense and defense. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, I just happened to pick it up yesterday. One of their main guys is out and cannot play. Uh, a guy named Joe Thomas, I think his name is. That's a nice kick. See Bounder, 20, 25, 30. 35, and that's all. So as the uh, Ashland defense heads out onto the field, taking a look to see if uh, Massaro is uh, out there. I don't see him right now. I did see him suited up. As, as uh, you may, people re may remember, he dislocated his shoulder in the th late in the third quarter against Millbury. And he's going to try that, and play. That was the game that got the Clockers into the Super Bowl. From the shotgun. Up the middle. Not much. It's Jake Maloney and Ryan Dwinnells and Dom Cavanaugh all in there on the tackle. Ryan, of course, the Tri-Valley League lineman of the year. Yeah, a lot of accolades for this Ashland team with the uh, the awards. Now, there's three main players on the Fenwick number 14 side. right there. Their quarterback. Yeah, and, and, uh, he's, and he's been playing great of late. He's had 15 touchdown passes the last four games. And Sefuentes is uh, another name you'll see a lot, hear a lot, and that's him with the ball. He's also their place kicker, and they call him Mr. Automatic. I thought we had Mr. Automatic on our team. Uh, we lost the rights after that extra Jeez, point. Yes. But that was, well, that wasn't Andre's fault. That wasn't a missed kick. Yeah, you're yeah. right. That was uncharacteristic of Matt Neal because he's done a great job oh. holding the ball, bad snaps, good snaps. As we, and, as and we punting say, Rob, as well. it's a three person process the snap, the hold, and yeah. the kick. Oh. Bishop. Bishop Fenwick with a third down and about two and a half. Deep set. They're going to run it again. Big hole, first down. Yeah. Kavanaugh in there on the tackle and Frank to uh, finish it. Quarterback for the uh, Crusaders. Did you go up and buy a, uh, a Bishop uh, Peabody newspaper? What is, is that, the Herald? I'll show it to you at halftime. This is the glove. They had a very nice write-up. Nice. On the game, on all the Super Bowl games. But somebody did a lot of work to put this all together. Looking for a pass. First pass for the, he throws it up for grabs. What? Oh, please. Is uh I guess it's pass interference against Ashland. Yeah. It certainly didn't look like it. No, we get a chance to take a look at the replay, but it's not going to change it. Look, it just thrown up for grabs. Oh, did he mm, grab him? Maybe right before that. Yeah. Grabbed him around the back there, around the shoulder pads, yeah. <laughs> so Fuentes has 810 so yards rushing. So 16 touchdowns. 15 yard penalty, so they'll take over on the 30. And that's something Ashland's avoided all season, really, was the any big penalties. And even when they've had a penalty, they've seemed to bounce back and not let it really hurt them. So we'll see what happens here on this the big stage. quarterback will run with the ball. We haven't seen that that's yet. That's Sefuentes. Oh, they toughened up. And Kavanaugh got into the backfield and just held on to the legs and didn't let him go. Don makes a lot of tackles from his linebacker position. 
Tri-Valley Player of the Year, Dom Cavanaugh. But he'll be the first one to tell you that he couldn't have done it without the supporting cast. Uh, he's had a historic passing performance, a historic performance by yeah. any Ashland High School quarterback. It was a, uh, a record year in the Ashland passing. They go deep over the middle too long. That's going to bring up a third and long. That was Matt Neal on the coverage. So we're in that two down territory range. So they don't have to get it all here. You know, my son Bobby was the quarterback on the 95 Super Bowl team. He, he texted me yesterday. He goes, uh, Tom Kavanaugh's statistics for the last game were the same as mine for the entire season. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing yeah. game. And he only played three quarters. Yeah. Against a championship team. It was pretty amazing. Oh, he goes the Throw other back way. screen and hit the ground. Yeah. That play was there. He just couldn't get deliver the ball. It was. And now and, it's fourth down. And the good pressure by Ashland kind of forced him to throw it a little before he was ready. You know, that was two down territory, Rob. I just I just realized. Yeah. You know, if they could have picked up five, that would have been huge, and mm -hmm. they would have had it easy if that pass had connected. So now it's yeah. fourth and ten, a little tougher assignment it here. Eddie Braganca that was uh, first in there to chase him down on, he on that He just couldn't pick play. it up. It was just too low. Right in front he's, of the Ashland crowd, he's, cheerleaders. He's got a back with him. Wilson That's, takes the snap straight back. Long and deep. Nobody there. Clockers hold to take over on downs. Ashland gets it back. They lead 6 nothing. We got 4.08 to go in the first period. Bob Thacker, Rob Silver, live on tape from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, the Division VI Super Bowl. The Ashland Clockers versus the Bishop Fenwick Crusaders. December 7th, 2019. Clockers in white, Crusaders in black. Kavanaugh brings them out. What does he got? Three? Well, three wideouts in a slot. Got Gazzard up to his right. He's got Lopez, like Lopez in the backfield. Lopez in the backfield, yeah. And he gets the call. Looks for a block. Oh, Very boy. Patient. Oh, boy. He wanted to bring that one outside. He got little or nothing. But he Jake was just, Connolly on the tackle. He was just a step away from getting a nice game. Yep. Second and ten coming up. So I was kind of glad that the uh, Ashland was receiving the ball first. Uh, yep. And and uh, ideally you want them to go down and score and kind of you know set set the tone, which they did. But and that's exactly and, how they've have they've reacted many times this season after a taking a kickoff. Yeah. So we see when they've... Oh. Straight back. Broken up at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play. Ethan Gonzalez, 83. 83, isn't that a... That must be his receiving number. Must um, be a combination receiver and defensive end. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Tight end and defensive end. You're right. But um, yeah, we've seen when they've started on defense, they've kind of been a little slow, you know, start with Ashland. So, like we said, you know, seeing them on offense and they've given and up long things, drives, almost like they need to yeah. get the blood flowing. So the fact that they did it on offense, they stood up there on defense. They don't always give up a touchdown, but they usually give up yards. Kavanaugh with a beautiful play fake. He wants to run, he wants to pass, he lets it go. It's intended for Gaz, a tremendous coverage by old number 20. Stefano Fabiano. Oh, you can't do better than that. Wow. Uh, but Dom put it in a place where it could not be intercepted, I guess you'd have to say. I, I thought he might keep it. It was Yes. It was almost, they, they had nobody on the right side, so there just wasn't enough uh, space. Let's see what he does this time. Of course, it's 10 yards for a first down. No, this is fourth down, so they're punting. They got Matt Neal back. That was a I missed the play. You're right. Oh, hard line drive. Hangs up and a fair catch. It hit him! And now he picks it up and advances. That's a penalty. You can't advance. Yeah, there's the flag. There you go. You cannot advance or attempt to advance a fair catch.
Jeez, um. <laughs> you see, I noticed when I was coming into the stadium, hopelessly lost trying to find this boot. I, I, know, I noticed they had, like, Ashley in sections 110 to 114 on the marquee, uh, mm -hmm. you know? And now I see that they've they've created a barrier at the 50-yard line. That's now. how they do it, yeah. So the Bishop Fenwick fans are on one side and the Ashley fans are on another yeah. trying, to, trying to keep order, I guess. Our fans outnumber them. I have to give them credit. Yeah. Three to one almost, it looks like. And, of course, uh, school-wise, they're about the same. <coughs> School population-wise, that's how the divisions are created, I guess. Clarkers and the Th and Fenwick both in Division Six. Ashland's third Super Bowl trip in history, and the Super Bowls date back to around 1970 something. Clarkers, this is their third appearance. They're one and one. Fenwick was here just a few years ago. Up the middle, a very good run. Very close to a first down. That's their other running back, Tucker Destino. Decent number of uh, underclassmen on this Bishop Fenwick. They have nine squad. seniors. We have 24. Fenwick was in the Super Bowl last 2013. So just under... Three minutes, 2.40 to go in the first quarter. Second pos possession on uh, offense for Bishop Fenwick. Uh, uh, A little uh, uh, movement. Uh, uh, uh. We're not, no play, no play. Uh, nobody has to talk to anybody. The referee immediately calls the false start. Five-yard penalty against the Crusaders. Clock is in the Crusaders from Gillette Stadium. Thrilled to be able to bring you today's game on WACA TV. We've been with the Clockers all season long, and they let us, uh, thanks to the efforts of uh, Rob Silver and Barbara Chisholm, we got MIA permission to record the game, so at least we can have it on our stations uh, forever. Of course, the game's being broadcast on NBC Sports as well, all the Super Bowls. So Fuente is trying to run wide, gets around Ionarelli. Kavanaugh brings him down, though. He just couldn't get around. He just ran out of space. Got the got the six six yards. Made up the penalty. Or five yards. So it's going to be a second down play when play resumes. I think here. Am I right? Yes, second and ten. Yeah. And we have to recognize the uh, defensive front line: Ryan Dornells, Andrew Ryan Arelli, Sean Harding in there, Eddie Braganca, Jake Tolan. And uh, Dom Sauer on the sidelines, unfortunately. But other nice a hole. A good run. It's going to be an interesting third down play coming up. Ryan Dwinnell's on the tackle. Sean, Sean's one of the biggest players in the league. You know, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. He's listed at 315. But look at him run. Yeah. He's coming off the field now. <laughs> they have a big boy, too. Uh, they have a guy named Nick Valentin, who's 285. 285, that's third on our, our <laughs> roster. They got Ryan, Ryan Dwinnell's is 290, I think. Big third down. Oh, no. he, found a, he found a seam and got through it for a very nice gain. First and 10 Crusaders at the 30. They trail 6 nothing. And driving, it's times running down in the first period, a minute and 20, and the clock is running. Yeah, they've had some good success on the ground. Not monster gains, but not not three yarders either. Right in that nice five, six, seven, eight area. Two backs in the backfield. One goes in motion. I gotta believe they're gonna run again. And keeps they do. It, keeps it. And he runs it himself, Chris Wilson. First time we've seen Wilson do that today. Very effective. Very effective first down play. Mm -hmm. Net seven, second and three coming up. There's an issue. No, there isn't. Coach McKay got to figure some way to stop this ground game. See if he packs the box a little more. He goes with the four man front. They run it again. This time we're all over it. And now it's third down again. They lost two. Ian Arelli and Kavanaugh. Taking them down there. 
Well, I give the Crusaders credit. They've shown the pass, so the Clarkers have to respect it. It hasn't been successful, but they've shown it. And now... Clark, Clark did it, 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 Oh, no, end of the quarter. It, it did expire, yes. End of the quarter. So we go back, to, we'll go to the sunny side of the field. Timeout on the field. Ashland six, Bishop Fenwick nothing. 2019 Division VI Super Bowl at Gillette Stadium. Hi Ashland, Todd Carter down here on the field at Gillette Stadium. Your Ashland Clockers are up six to nothing after the first quarter. We're getting ready for the second quarter of action here with our field cam. I'm here with Allison Rose. Let's bring you the action. Enjoy. Todd, you know, it must be nice for the kids to know Tom Brady and Julian will be out here tomorrow afternoon right on the same turf. Yeah, I know. I, I, it, it reminded me of the movie Hoosiers, which yes. I'm sure you've seen when, when they go to play the championship and uh, Gene Hackman has them take the tape measure out. Yep. The same, same dimensions you play. Same, same yep. field. Same field. Just don't worry about all the, the distractions. I think it's, what, is it 50, what is it, 50? It's 110 feet across. And uh, the width of the field was based on the dimensions of Harvard Stadium. That's how they got that odd width. Because the stands came up, that's where they drew the line. Okay. And it became the standard. And this is a nice treat for the cheerleading squad on oh both sides Lord. that they get to perform on, the, on this field. Isn't it fabulous, huh? And the sun helps, doesn't it? And everything, everything looks gorgeous. Yeah. It's all donated by craft uh, organization. Yeah, very, very generous. You can imagine the cost of even opening the, the doors to this place today. The security, the staffing, it's the parking, everything. So, <laughs> I, I do agree that uh, finding, finding the actual booth, if you haven't been here before, because it was my first time, it was a little, little convoluted. Yeah, You're going through doors that you think shouldn't be open <laughs> and, and just get, not. You know, they, I get, the elevator door is open, Rob, but oh, yeah? once you're inside, none of the buttons work. You could not get oh, to the third have... level, the second, you know. I wonder if you went in, because they had a, yeah, they had a person the working the elevator, so maybe you came in a yeah, different. Yeah, I was on the other side, and I mm -hmm. had no attendant. Yep. Here we go. Third and five. Big play. Wilson rolls. He's All got a man time. open, but he threw it too high. He made it a tougher catch yep. than it needed to be, and now he's got a fourth down. Yeah, and it's not that hard, not that difficult to throw. You know, no. you see these guys make it all the, the time. Sometimes those are the toughest, right? The short throw where he's wide open. Yeah, going to the right side. They're going. But he had Latessa breathing down his neck, so I'm sure that. It was going to be a hard hit if you know if it caught it. You're right. Yeah. So we got Eddie Braganca right in the middle of that line. Watch out and for Eddie. Harding, Duenels. Eddie has a knack at making a big defensive play. Ionarelli to the right. Just like he does when he carries the ball. Here we go, fourth down. Fourth and five at the 25. Quick out, he wants to go. He goes across the field. Nice throw. That's the field. Oh. The ball comes loose, but he's Wait. down. Oh. And that's the call. First down, Crusaders. Well-designed play and well-executed play there. I've, I've said all season, the clock has been very vulnerable to that play for some reason. Oh, it was close. He's on the replay. He was stripping it as he was going down. But the, I think he got a knee, hand in. The knee did just hit. He was yeah. just so a big first down makes it first and fifteen for uh, Bishop Fenwick. First and ten at the fifteen. Of yes, course. Excuse yeah. Me. He goes end zone. He's turn got around, a man. Turn around. Nobody turned around, and the, finally the receiver did, but it was already on the ground. Obi Brown on the coverage. Obi just turned around in time, but that ball could not be caught. Second and ten. <sighs> you know, Rob, when you're running effectively, at first now all of a sudden it's second and ten. And 
Now you can't run, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what happens. I hate to give up that first down play on an incomplete pass. He keeps it. Wilson keeps it. And fumble. He Loose lost again. it. He lost it. Oh, man. Again, they call him down. It's a third and ten coming up. They have a great field goal kicker, a place kicker who's uh, Sofentes, but uh, we got a third to not get ahead of ourselves. It's third and ten. Yeah, I suppose a lot depends on what happens on this play. Yeah, it looked like a good call. Another another close one. Ryan Dwinell with a nice tackle, though. He's got a running back, and he's got three wideouts. Chris Wilson. Oh, he overthrew him. Oh, boy. He was open. That was their two-way player, Ethan Gonzalez, number 83. The tight end. Wow. Wow, some bad throws by Chris Wilson. Uncharacteristic. He's been red hot for the Crusaders. He made that clutch fourth down throw earlier, but... Uh, that was on gonna, the money. Yeah, and it had to be. And this is going to... He's going to need another clutch throw here. Same formation. I'm guessing they're coming near side. No, they go the other way. End zone. He's open. Flag on the play. He caught it anyway. Wow. That was a clutch throw there. Yeah. Excellent play. Pro style. Let's see if we can figure out who got it. Angel yeah, Martinez. Number 34. There, with a, a pro style reception. And the game is tied. And uh, so Fuentes will have to live up to his press clippings now. If that's him. Yes. It uh, is. The kicker? Yep. David is his first name. Trying to take the lead in the second period. Snap back ball down. No. Doesn't look good. No, just short. It isn't good. So, the totally unexpected, the, the automatic twins uh, both missed their, free, their extra point tries here in the first half, and the score stays. Wow. Ashland, six, and Bishop Fenwick, six, with eight, two, nine left to go <laughs> until halftime. Are we playing 10-minute quarters? That's yes, what I heard. it yeah. is 10-minute quarters. We played 12 during the season. But in order to get these games in and out, because there's four more games after this one, they already played one this morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, they have reduced the quarters to 10 minutes for the Super Bowl. I'm assuming the timeouts remain at three per team yeah. per half. special uh, no special so. signage for the tournament that I see mm -hmm. so uh, we have uh, the field the still has Patriots all over yeah. it Maloney and Latessa deep I don't think it's going to get to them though They're hard oh. grounder handled mishandled right. and fallen on at the 18 and the Clarkers will start there Oh, that's right. They assessed the penalty on the kickoff that uh, pass interference, it looks like. Are you kidding me? I think so. Looked like it got down there quick. I'll have to see the replay. Well, they Hold kicked on. from the 40. They would have been kicking from the 45 oh, no. of us. Yeah. yeah. Unless there was another flag, uh, Rob, on the extra point try. No, no, can't be. No. Well, anyways, uh, field position. We're on our 18. Clockers love bad field position. <laughs> Some of their greatest drives of the season have been from inside their own five. Yeah. Inside their own five. Sometimes inside their own two. Lopez for three. Yeah, and WACA put together a nice highlight reel with a lot of the big games and their championship drive. They did a really good job. Nice story in the uh, Metro West Daily News, too. Yeah, a very good story on the team. Yeah, Tommy Castle's done uh, yeah. a lot of good pieces. Timeout. And McKay.
McKay is not happy about something. Ashland just one left in this half, 7.48 to go. So that could be important if it, near the end of the half, if the clockers need to s stop play. But we'll see. This deep in your own territory is not a place where you want to make any mistakes. So it's important that everyone's on the same page. Clark is in white today, all white today. And the Crusaders in all black. And uh, the offensive line consisting of uh, Colin Dagg, Ryan Dwinell, Zion Arelli, and uh, number 59 for Ashland, who we don't mention a lot, Dylan Drozak, who's done a great job all year. If you don't mention him, that means he's doing his job. When, you, when your quarterback has a record-setting year, you're doing your job. Well said. Second and seven. Don wants to pass over the middle. He's open. He's got his favorite receiver. Oh, he makes Russell. a move. He gets to the 50. 30-yard gain, Kavanaugh to Russell. Kevin Russell, what a year he's had. And Russell, maybe. 48 catches this year, 719 yards. And we've talked about it, but his hands are so soft. 11 you, you could be throwing a little baby to him, and yep. I'd feel comfortable about him catching. 11 touchdowns, too, for Kevin. If you ever have to toss your kid out of a burning window. Who's got it? You want Russell down there. Ah, uh, Kavanaugh kept it. He kept it, you're right. Two yards. Yeah. How many, uh, is Ashland 11 and one? Is this their 13th game or are they 10 and one? 11 and one, the one loss being on Thanksgiving day. And you know, it's funny when I was, uh, I had walked into the booth for Hockington when they were broadcasting and we were talking and I found out from my daughter that they were wearing the freshman uniforms. And I think it was almost symbolic because they didn't really play their starters. So, you know, in reality, the varsity team's 11 and 0 and the JV, you know, had a loss on Thanksgiving but Day. Imagine nice playing, pass there. Imagine a high school team playing 13 games. That's a first down. And I would think by the moves that it was Jake Latessa, Bubba Gazard. Wow. Gazard's been the, uh, nice the target for many strikes by Kavanaugh this season and again today. I like the hurry up offense here. Getting the blood pumping. Oh, quite well, ready. We got to yeah, get the modified play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to get the play. Clark is now at the 30-yard line of the Crusaders. First and ten. With uh, Lopez S in the backfield. Second quarter action. It's a handoff, and it's nothing doing. Yeah. Did he lost Eddie's been yard. amazingly resilient this year. Uh, what a year he's had. Tough as they come. 820 yards rushing. Big, big game against Milbury to get the clockers to this Super Bowl. Second and 10. Dom wants to pass over the middle. A Wide open to Gazzard. Touchdown. Touchdown! Kavanaugh to Gazzard. Clockers take the lead. He's been doing it all year, and now he's doing it on the big stage. 31 yards. Second touchdown connection Gazzard. today. Both to Kavanaugh Gazzard. To Gazzard. Bubber, I guess, was injured all last season? He was. Yeah. yeah. Came back just in time for a successful hockey season. And he's, well, there's been a lot of differences this year, but and having Stanelli, him back. That's the form. And that's why he is the Mr. Automatic. 13 to 6. He didn't get a chance to kick the first one. 5.09 to go until halftime. Clark has regained the lead. 
And once again, the clocker passing attack befuddling their opponent. Four receivers. I don't. I think Grover had the touchdown against Hoppington, didn't he? Was he? Or he had a no, long because game. his first touchdown was. Uh, oh, yeah, he had a long gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His and first they, touchdown was against Millbury. Yes. And he had a long gain against the uh, Hillers on Thanksgiving morning. And I think it goes worth noting that number five was P.J. Ferrier's old, uh, That's old right. number. So, the Ashland captains, we should mention, are... Jake Latessa. We'll be here all day if you mention all. Well, they only have four listed here now. Oh, uh, mishandling the snap. Sometimes that can work against the uh, clockers, as we saw in that Holliston That's game. That's right. Oh, boy. It kind of takes that you out of your. That was a shocker. Uh, you let up. You let up. Yeah. That was one of the plays of the oh, year. Ooh. They get out to the 29. They're going to start there. Okay, yeah, so the captains uh, as... Uh, I have Jake Latessa, Dom Kavanaugh, Colin Dagg, and Ryan Dwinnells. And we have uh, oh, Dom Massaro, Brandon Grover. You came to the, uh, Jake you came to the breakfast, right? Yeah. They were they, only allowed to bring four. They cap, were only allowed to bring four. Yeah. You have to tell us about that if we get a minute. Yeah. Sort of a Tessa toss. trying to run him down. Uh -oh. Good a job little bit of by speed. Him. A little bit of speed and some open field. He wanted to break it inside, but the clock has kept pursuing. But it's a huge gain. Biggest gain of the day for the Crusaders. 20 plus yards. And uh, into Ashland territory. I know it was a it was a big play, but you got to give Latessa credit. He started chasing him down over here at the 30 yard line, ran all the way across the field, and ultimately made the tackle. 25 yards downfield, he, never gave up on it. That ball carrier looks like a guy to watch, though. He looked like he had speed. Yeah, Andrew Martinez, yeah. He's, he's touched it a few times, got the big third down. Now play. they go back up the middle for a tough, tough five yards. Plowing into the heart of the Ashland defense. So, you know, you know on defense, the, we had those two near strips. So we'll see if that comes into play at some point, if maybe they can get one before the knee hits the ground. We've been pretty good about holding on to the ball. Yes, all season. So we're just under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Second and seven. They show pass on a second and five, and it's a quick out, but he bounced it. Third and five coming up. Uh, Chris Wilson has had more trouble on the shortest passes. Right. And then the, the big pressure yeah. plays, he's been uh, yeah, over perfect. The, over the middle in traffic, he's right on the money. Right, and that, that dime that he threw in the corner for the perfect. touchdown. Now it's third down, and if you don't get this, your coach will have to make a decision. He rolls this time. Now he lets it go deep downfield. Well defended. Out of bounds. Caught. He's out of bounds. Incomplete. Good coverage by Obi Brown there. Woo! Nobody, nobody was going to catch it except Obi. Uh, the he, boy actually caught it though, right? Well, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he angled yeah. him out of bounds. So yep. uh, tremendous defensive coverage by Brown, and he's been a big contributor. I, I don't know if he was injured for a little bit, but having him back full time on both sides of the ball has been a huge asset. So here we go. Fourth and sixth. Yeah. 335 to go. And they're going to go for it. Can't blame them. Or they could do one of those uh, running punt thingies. Yeah, timeout. Well, you could go for field position too, Rob. Yeah, sometimes they'll line up and they'll, you know, like they're going to run a play and then they take two steps and kick it. So I mean, going for it on fourth is not, you know, I mean, punting is not a horrible call here. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. 
Definitely not, especially. It looks it looks a little longer than five. That was five, but it looks yeah, more like six, six and a half. Definitely yeah. six, six and a half. It's so all, all a decision, a time for Ashland's defense to get organized with three, three, five to go. And, yeah, so uh, uh, you get were asking breather. about the breakfast. So we had, uh, I was able to attend the breakfast with uh, a couple Right here members, at Gillette. Right here in the, uh, yeah, the Putnam Club and. So they served a nice buffet breakfast for all the teams and their uh, administrator. The, we had uh, Kelly St. Cure and uh, Stephen Marks as well were there for Ashland. And um, then Andre Tippett gave a nice uh, speech. They unveiled the uh, Aganis Trophy, the new trophies that Balfour uh, put together, and uh, one for each division that were sitting in... Uh, when we got off the wrong floor in the elevator, we saw them. I snapped a picture of the Division Six trophy. And uh, then they had the media, Channel 5 and uh, Fox 25 were there. And of course, WACA and a lot of other local coverage. So it was a, it was a, it was a really nice, nice event. Here we go, fourth and six. He wants to pass. He's got a man wide open. Did he get the first down? He oh, did. Yeah. And Donnell has almost got a finger on it, too. Wow. Stefano Fabiano, that's his spot. It's twice he's caught some big plays down there. It Looking at the replay, I thought, I thought Donnell has almost got a finger on it. No, it didn't come out smooth, but. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, play for Ashland's first touchdown. <laughs> yes. Plenty of space and a big first down for the Crusaders. That's at least the second time they've done that. Yeah, the big plays is when he comes through. Chris Wilson with a Y. Oh, nice throw there. Oh, this one he lays right in there, nice and soft. Touchdown saving tackle by... Obi Brown. Yes, Brown again, making the play. But boy, he laid that one right in. Yeah, you don't want this guy getting into a rhythm. Now they're down to the 15, first and 10. Ashland leading 13 to six. Crusaders driving with time running down in the first half, coming up on three minutes left. And Bishop Fenwick is in no hurry to uh, run their plays because if they do score, they don't want to give Ashland too much time to mount a Yeah, they'd have to kick it off drive. to the clock, mm -hmm. exactly. So 2.53 to go and counting. Looking for another short pass. Oh, it's picked off! Sean Harding! Flag flies. Harding takes it to the 27. Flag looked to be after the interception in the holding area. Oh, no. Oh, my word. Roughing the passer. Woo! I'm looking at the replay here. Woo! Oh, Ryan, uh, Andre Ionarelli, helmet to helmet. <sighs> Is that going to wipe out the interception? It does. And that's one thing we've been able to avoid all year is the catastrophic penalty. Just not to take anything away from the athletic play by Sean Harding with what would have been his career highlight right there. Heartbreaking. Halfway to the goal line now at first and goal at the seven and a half. Well, a great interception by Harding, the biggest man on the field, wiped out by the roughing the passer. And no question about it. They quickly go up the middle and the clock is say we're not done yet. Nope. Tornells and Braganca on the tackle. And Harding has stepped up big. He, he's gotten more playing time as the uh, season has gone on and really made a big impact in that uh, East Bridgewater game where they were running through, running all over us. And he started getting some time and did Clark, really well. Clark is with a five-man front. Oh, fumble! He has to fall on it. He took the safe route. He had time to pick it up and do something, but he took the safe route. Can't blame him. 
He's back at the 14 now, and all of a sudden, it's third and goal at the 14. It's not the first time if uh, they don't capitalize on this uh, this drive that the Ashland Clockers have benefited from some bad snaps. That Holliston game, the end of the East Bridgewater game, yes. when they had to bring in their uh, yes. backup quarterback. And oh my God. Actually, it wasn't a bad snap. It was just. I look for two in the end zone here, Rob. What about you? They've had some luck. They had a touchdown on a play like yeah, that. Yeah, they got Let's... Fabiano lined up to the top. He's looking for him. End zone. He, no, no miscommunication there. No one's getting that one. Fourth down. That was Fabiano. He came. He thought it was a curl route, and the other th guy thought it was a curl and go. This is a long field goal, uh, especially uh, when, when your first extra point was short. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm thinking they're going to pass again for the end zone. I'm thinking you're right. Let's see. We got left here, Rob. 111. 111. Oh, and Fenwick burns a timeout. Um, Rob, is that their second or their third? I think it's their second. Yeah. Okay, clock as I've already used two as well. Yeah. So with 111 to go, both teams, we feel, have one timeout left. But an important play for Fenwick, so a, 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 a timeout well spent, you'd have to say. <coughs> so Ashland yeah. and Bishop Fenwick are in quite a battle here, just as it should be, yeah. for the Division VI Super Bowl championship. And what do we call it? The Harry Aganis Trophy. Yes. Aganis, of course, a and the great collegiate star at Boston University. Yeah, the MIAA uh, director gave a nice, uh, nice talk about the uh, Harry Aganis and his history. The and Golden Greek? Yes. He went to BU, he had offers all over the country, he had offers, and then he had job offers, and he stayed local to, I think he was from Lynn, to uh, take care of his family. He played for the Red Sox. When he got sick, got sick uh, in June of 1953, he was batting clean up behind Ted Williams. Mm. They didn't think Here anything of it, but he died a Fourth few days and 15. later. Fourth and goal, excuse me. End zone, he's open. He's got it, touchdown. He did a 360, found the ball. No flags. A breakdown in the coverage there by Ashland. A very, very uncharacteristic. Let's watch it on replay, Rob. Let's see what happened. Watch him do a 360 looking yeah. for that ball. Whoa, there it is. I think Grover collided with one of his other uh, defenders. His Fenwick's gonna, so. Are they going to try to tie it up or are they going to go for two in the lead? I'm thinking they go for two. And they come out going for two. 13 to 12, Ashland. Fenwick trying to take the lead. Under center. Quick out across the That's middle. Good. It's good. Fabiano. With the reception, two-point conversion, and the lead. And Bishop Fenwick takes a 14 to 13 lead with 104 left until halftime. You take away Bishop Fenwick's fourth down, they might have negative yards. For Brother, the, 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 they score on a fourth and 15. Fourth and goal at the 15, I should say. And, yeah. and then they get the two-point conversion on that play. Uh, across the middle that has hurt the clock is all season long. Yeah. Very tough to defend. Well, the clockers have certainly faced adversity this year. Time they and time again. Bounce back every time. So we'll see what happens here. If we can get a little bit of field position, they'll put the pedal to the metal and see if we can get some points before the half. A minute two to go, minute four. Ashland High School kicks from the 40. Crowd getting him fired up. He goes deep. It's returnable. At the 21. Maloney, I believe. Across the 30. 
up to the 35 and driven back. So the clock is start at their own 35 with 58 seconds to work with. One timeout, we believe. And the clock is a trailing Bishop Fenwick, 14 to 13. So they'd like to get something on the board here before halftime. Fenwick will be taking the second half kickoff if you're thinking ahead. And uh, our booth, I think, is right next to, uh, that's the CBS booth right there. So if you want to fill out an application when you're done at halftime, Bob, they I've might already, be looking for help tomorrow. I've already turned them down many times. They've been after me for years. Oh, okay. I think I Because right. you didn't want to travel. That was it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a good uh, seven yards first down. I thought, isn't a game on NBC? It's on 577. Uh, NBC uh, Sports yeah, 10. Yeah, so yeah. Th they're setting up for tomorrow's game. Oh, for Because I uh, saw the monitor with the uh, pro Romo's game, name. The Patriots but. game tomorrow, yeah. So we got a first down here at the 50-yard line. Ashland uses their last time out. 34 seconds to go. This might be one of those times where they're going to throw it up for Russell and let them out jump everybody. And she's their... Uh, Rob, the, it's it's uh, f what are we fifty plus away, right? It's yeah. just uh, yeah, I'm sure Dom Kavanaugh can throw it. Dom can reach the end zone, right? It he might be a I time so. for a jump ball, or a hail mary, as they call it. Yeah, they they have time to run a play, get some yards, spike it, and run another one. They just have to all be on the same page and. Execute. What down is it, Rob? It's first down. I can't see the down mark. He's got protection. Steps up. He's going to run. It's going to get to the 40. It stops the clock with a first first down. They got to get back to the line. 25 seconds to go. Snap and spike. So the second down play coming up from the 20s with 22 seconds left from the Fenwick 40. So, Al, now this would be ironic, but I, I was at a golf fundraiser for PJ earlier in the summer, and I was talking to McKay. I said, do you ever think when you, similar to, to um, oh, actually, they don't have the timeout, but I, you do the fake, uh, fake, fake spike, fake, yeah, fake yeah, spike yeah, like yeah. Miami did, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Or make it seem like Kavanaugh's walking off the field, which I can't do it, actually. They don't have the timeout to call a timeout and then snap it to one of the uh, the backs or something. But let's see what happens. 22 seconds to go, first down. Second down, excuse Kavanaugh me. Kavanaugh has the play. He's got protection. He lets it go. It's low, but it's, first it's down. caught. Stops the clock momentarily. It's first down at the 25. Seconds. They stopped the clock to line up. They're going to have to spike it again, I guess. And they did. And it stops at 12. And it's a second down play, but uh, 12 seconds is the important thing here as Clarkers have three chances in 12 seconds to get into that end zone or get into that, Augustinelli range. Is that a seven on the jersey or is that a 12 with a TB? <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way he's orchestrating this, uh, this drive. So they, they get around the 26. Yeah, 10 more yards, and I think Augustinelli could even go for it if they, but again, 12 seconds, so you got to get down there. And Quick out. Get out Complete of bounds. Complete and out of bounds. It's not a first down, but we're closer now. Eight, so that took four seconds, that play. So if they can run one more sideline route, they can either try and throw one in the end zone or... Or kick a field goal. Yeah. Uh, Coach McKay likes the field goal. I guess they're nearly four for four this season on those tries. Uh, but I Very gotta, short. They I, were extra point-like field goals. I Nothing. can't believe they would like to at least one chance to get six. Yeah, eight seconds, though. Yeah, I know. It's. I know. You hesitate one second and, you know, before you throw it. and. Yep. You don't get another play. Right. He's in trouble. He He's cannot be tackled. He's looking bounce. for Grover. He threw it away. One second. He got another play. Wow. 
It's good to have an Ashland clock keeper. And it looks like a, a field goal unit is coming out. But man, it's going to be a 35. 35, yard. I think he can do it. He's going to get a chance to give Ashland the lead. He's kicked some extra points uh, you know, high into the net. There's a little bit of a breeze if you look at the little flags going a little bit in his favor. From the left hash. This is 35 yarder. Yeah. 35, 34, 34 and a half. Yeah. yeah. Biggest kick of his career. Snap back ball down. It's up. It looks short. Yeah, just short. And it is no good. It's halftime at Gillette Stadium. The Division VI Super Bowl on WACA TV. It's Bishop Fenwick 14 and Ashland 13. The second half is coming up in 10 seconds. Stay with us. You're watching Ashland High School Varsity Sports on Ashland Television. I think there's been a lot of exciting things with the season. Like Dominic wants oh, the wide, oh, wide open touchdown. Avanaugh, yeah. end zone, touchdown. The Bubba Gaz. Over the middle. Here we go. Intercepted. I'm in. He's going to pass from the end zone. He goes deep. He's open. He's got it. Can he outrun him? Oh, dragged down from behind. The Lopez. And he finds some room. He broke a tackle. He's gone. Eddie Lopez. Touchdown. So obviously it's really exciting, but uh, I think our mentality is we're just going to go in there, we're going to be physical, we're going to run our game plan, and, you know, I think we're, that's going to be good enough. Looking for the end zone. Oh. 
cheek. Split that side. The clock is on the Tri Valley League champions. I mean, I don't think there's any game this year where no matter, we could be down 49 nothing. I don't think anyone's like thinking that we're gonna lose. So I think the whole time, no matter what the score is, we, we believe that we're gonna win the game. Conversion. What, what were you drawing on and talking to your team? Our kids come and play their best in the toughest situations. That's kind of been the culture and the bloodline of these seniors, um, playing for a little bit something bigger than themselves. And um, I felt pretty good about our guys in that situation. Okay, we'll see if they try power. Full house back, Billy rolls right. He's got nothing. Thomas. He dives. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. He did not get in! The clock is in hell! The boy made a dive for the goal line. He did not make it. It was as close as close could be. A lot of this season has been motivated by the fact that we we believe we're the tougher team every time we come into these games. It's just the slow starts. We it's it's just a matter of us coming together as a team and like putting things together, not playing as individuals, but playing together as a unit. As so it seems. No. Fakes the handoff. They give it. He's got it. Deflected. And Latessa pulls it in. Touchdown. Touchdown. 
And it's blocked. Picked up. Picked up by Matt Neal. Keeps it. He rolls. He's gonna keep it himself. He's gonna run. Touchdown! And uh, they have a chance to be an undefeated team. The first undefeated Super Bowl team. And uh, an historic accomplishment is at, at their feet, ready, ready to be taken. And uh, they've showed no sign of letting up. They've met every challenge and, uh, and have come, come out victorious every step of the way. I'd say we have a pretty close bond, uh, everyone on the team. I've never been on a team where like everyone's been so close. It's definitely something special. Hi, Clocker fans. I'm Todd Carter down here at the field at Gillette Stadium. We're about 30 seconds away from bringing you the second half of action. Uh, the Clockers just came out of the locker room with Mr. McKay. We'll have to talk to him hopefully after the game about what he said to them at halftime. Again, this game is 13-14. Uh, Your Clockers looking to tie the game at one point. Uh, the cheerleaders are to my right. At the third quarter break, we're going to have them for you. They're going to be doing a routine here on the field at Gillette. Looking forward to it all. Yeah, McKay talking to Jake Latessa and Brandon Grover. Oh, that's not McKay, sorry. But. McKay's wearing the blue jacket. Blue Jacket uh, going over to the team. But, you know, McKay, just one, one part of this successful coaching staff. You have Peter Zakili, Matt Messer, Colin Murphy, J.O. Mispelli, Jason Mead, Mark McKay, Brad Jackson, John Noel, Mark Steigles, John Champaglia, Makia Lambert, and Dylan Martin all, all do their, their, their crucial role to help develop these players and do scouting and review game films and, and make adjustments at halftime, which we're going to have to have to do. Uh, they played a solid they played a solid first half. Chris Wilson for Bishop Fenwick has just come up with some key fourth down plays. And uh, Ashland will be kicking off. Andre Agostinelli kicking off and uh, deep for uh, Bishop Fenwick is Sefuentes and Angel Martinez. They try an onside kick does not go far enough. So right away, Ashland finds themselves behind the eight ball as Bishop Fenwick will take over at the clocker, 43 yard line, 44 yard line. And McKay has been known to uh, mix it up and Try a few uh, trick plays here and there. Unfortunately, that one didn't work. And Bishop Fenwick takes over, leading 14 to 13. Clock is trailing at the half. Is this only the second time this year? Uh, no, I, you know. I, I don't know. They, East Bridgewater. East Bridgewater. 14 to 7, was it? Yeah. So, uh, that was the first playoff game. 
trying to think. Uh, it could, yeah, it could be the first, second time trailing yeah. at the half. It may have been tied once or twice. But they tried an onside kick and only went about four yards. That's why Bishop Fenwick has this good field position now, sec second and six. Coach McKay, a gambler. So Fuente strings it outside. Picks up about five, four. Fenwick taking that good field position and staying on the ground. The, the mood is very similar to that Holliston game where Holliston scored those two quick touchdowns and oh. then was dry. You know, you almost felt they like... They came back on us. Old Rochester came back on us. Yeah. So the again, clock has had built the lead. We faced some adversity before and been able to bounce back. Oh, big hole there. That's a first down. Just underway in the second half. Crusaders driving and leading 14 to 13. Thanks to a two point conversion <coughs> on their second touchdown. Yeah, they stay on the ground. Smart play. Another another good chunk of yards, five yards. Guess who? Dwinnell's again for Ashland. And there were a lot of members of uh, of the Ashland of the Ashland squad that uh, got recognition in the Tri Valley uh, Awards. On defense, we had Andrew Iannarelli. Uh, Edward Bragan Eddie Braganca as uh, Tri Valley League All Stars. No play. We had uh, Don Massaro as an All Star linebacker. Makes a lot of tackles, Rob. Yep, and uh, uh, you can definitely tell the the defense has played well today, but they def definitely miss him. They miss him on uh, defense, and uh, Andre Agostinelli. MVP, uh, Tri Valley All Star kicker. And then on offense, uh, we had Kavanaugh. We talked about Eddie Lopez as a running back. Jake Latessa, Kevin Russell. You don't see Bubba Gazin on there, but he definitely deserves as much credit as anybody. He was solid. But everybody can't be an All Star. Ryan Dwinnell is again on the tackle. He's having a monster game. Andre is all star selection, well deserved. Only missed one extra point this season. Yeah. And did not miss a field goal attempt. 27 of 28, I think it was, or 28 of 29, yeah. For extra points, clock is with. So big third down, a third and about slew of four touchdowns. or five. They try Nothing to run. Nothing there. Twinnells, Braganca, Ooh, he good won't job. won't go down, but they got him. Good job by him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So it brings up fourth and four. Now here we go. Yeah. The fourth down play run. And he hasn't passed, so he's a little cold passing now. It's been a nemesis, so the clock is and a, a boon for the Crusaders this afternoon here at this morning and afternoon here at Gillette Stadium. The Division VI Super Bowl, Bob Thacker, Rob Silver, Todd Carter, so, Connor Donovan. He gets off in time. Yeah, that was his best run of the year. They go Little to the trickery, run. and he's going to throw. He's open. Oh, just overthrown. The clock is hold and take over on downs. Intended for number 34, Angel Martinez, Latessa. 
What on was the it? coverage. Was that the option pass? Or did the he, option razzle dazzle? Did it end, who ended up throwing it? Uh, that was, it was not the quarterback, was it? I don't think it was. No. Just missed the replay there. The target. It might have been Cifuentes. Yeah, Angel Martinez, uh, the target, but even he couldn't get that one. So once again, coming out of the half, Ashley and holds on defense, and we'll see what they can do. They were marching the ball really well before the half. Time was against their side. Kavanaugh deep, goes deep. Pass interference, but no call. Wow. I've seen this play. Ashley. I've Ashley seen this. Fans, I've yeah. seen this play recently, Rob, and uh, the officials have to watch out for it. We watch it on instant replay. Yeah, that's through him. But there's a certain play that a receiver can make where he stops and lets the back run into him. Yeah, the D back. But that was not the case there. Uh, no, but it, Russell reached up and went through him. There was some bumping but no pass interference. I think it was a good call. Second and 10. Let's see if they try and exploit that height advantage again on that up top. Dom wants to throw. He's looking for Gazzard. Oh, off his fingertips. Good pass defense, yeah, but Gazzard had a chance to take it in anyway. Just off his fingertips. Third and 10. Yeah, that was gonna be a tough one to complete. That was perfect coverage there. Fenwick has tightened up their pass defense as this game has gone along. Great job by Jake Connolly to tip that one away. Good position. Seems like the middle has been open all year long. Let's see. Let's if see. They, if they design a play to. That's my call, it. too. Let's see what they do. Don't be Three wideouts to the near side. Straight back, a deep drop, a jump pass. Middle screen to Maloney. He's across the 30. He's got a first down. He's, He's got the speed. The 40. He takes it inside. Down at the 31-yard line. Jake Maloney from Dominic Kavanaugh. On the design screen. Two players converged on him, and he just was able to escape the tackle at the line of scrimmage and take off for about 45 yards. Number two, Jake Maloney. As you like to say, yards after the catch. Yak. Yak, thank you, thank you. With a C, I not, gotta, not, not the animal. I, I heard a new one uh, last night, RPO. Oh yeah, run play option. Yeah, run, run pass, pass option, option, excuse yeah. me. That one, Zeddy Lopez bowling his way forward for about three yards. Very tough run. And I have no pro problem if Ashland decides to throw every down. It, it seems like that's one of their better percentage plays. Well, you know, the, the Dominic Cavanaugh's really had a historic season passing, you know, almost 3,000 yards passing. Mm -hmm. Uh, an incredible 29 touchdowns and another nine or so running. And they don't need to get 20 or 30, but just that five, six yards where they... Again. Oh, Obi Brown. He had a hole. He got close to the first down. Yeah, about a half a yard short. Third down coming up. Oh, and he's a little slow getting up. Uh, that's Eddie Braganca. He's been banged up all season off and on. Tough kid. Always seems to come back. Yeah, so Dom is, Dom is closing in on 3,000 yards at 31 touchdown passes, including today. Wow. And, uh, you know, another impressive thing, a 66% completion rate. Yes. Yeah, that's two out of three. So here we are, big third down, third and one. Clockers trailing 14 to 13, three minutes to go in this Division Six MIAA championship game. Oh, and he is 
tripped up in the backfield. Third oh, quarter, Kobe of Brown. course, yes. Nice tackle by Andre, uh, Andrew Wilson. Well, let's see if the Clockers have any fourth down magic rub. Fenwick's run of fourth down plays ended on this, on their last possession. Let's see if the Clockers can get one going on their side. And faced a few of these this year. Usually it's to Russell where he'll just create a little bit of separation. Use his big body to. And the scouting report against this number 12, Jason Romans must uh, have him as a uh, really good player. Oh, Kavanaugh himself. keeps it. He didn't get it, it doesn't I, look. I think the guy over here, oh it depends where they mark. Yep, it's a he's bad short. spot. He's short. It's a bad spot, the Crusaders take over on downs. And that fires up the black and gold. So the clock has have to regroup immediately. They trail 14 to 13, 218 to go in the third period. A lot of time left, but the clock is a down one point. And the Crusaders have shown the ability to move the ball. On, yeah. the, on the ground, and they've had some success passing. I think he's a better passer than uh some of his early throws indicate whether it's nerves or the weather. The quick out across the 20. Tries to tiptoe forward, but he's Runs met. Runs into Harding. He's met. He got a couple. He's going to end up with a couple, but it's Looked like down. he could have had more, but he kind of yeah. tried to yeah. do a little too much. He just never saw the kind of gap that he could get through. All right, so we got a foul, a personal Ooh. foul on uh, Bishop Fenwick. Blindside block, wow. That will tend to happen when you see that type of, uh, those cutbacks. Of course the officials mic'd today, pro style. Yeah, it's a nice touch. So it makes it first and 20. Over the middle of the quick pass, he cuts it outside. A good tackle Grover there. Doesn't let go. That's the way to do it. Randy Grover would not let go. They got back eight yards on that play. Third down coming up. Second down. Second down, we had the penalty on first down. Oh, the penalty, of course, they replay the down. Wants the short pass again. It's complete. Out on the sideline. He got close. He got close. We'll see. No, they're not giving it to him. It doesn't look yeah, like about Robert. a yard short. So nice pass there. A dicey third and one. Nice pass. Then it's one on one, and it's him versus Obi Brown. And Clock is a given a cushion. Yeah, exactly. Ob made sure he did not get that first down. They like to go against Ob because they figure they got a size advantage. Uh, yeah, but, that's their, But he's uh, been up to it all Jason, season Jason long. Romans. So Fuentes, and he's, and he's got he's it. Picked up two. Right up the middle, got just what he needed. Fenwick keeps the ball with a minute or so left in the third period, and yeah. the clock running. And Fenwick holding a 14 to 13 lead over the clockers at Gillette Stadium. Up the middle. He did nothing. not fool Ianarelli or Colin Dagg. Nothing. 
Colin Dagg, also a member of the uh, Ashland High School Band. He was at a uh, Barnes & Noble concert last night leading the percussion section. Wow. So he does it all. And uh, he said after practice he went over to uh, for a weigh-in for wrestling and then over to uh, Barnes & Noble. You know, he's... <laughs> He's that th a rare three-way player. Yeah. And, and Offense, he, defense, and the band. And the band. And he's quite the orator. He was reading the Polar Express to the little kids. So. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Well, 10 minutes left to play. 10 minutes left in the season. 10 minutes left in the careers. Of, of a lot 24 of 24 seniors on the Ashland High School clocker team. And uh, 10 minutes to glory. And the clockers have another obstacle to overcome. They trail 14 to 13. They've done it all season, and now they have to do it one more time. Big cheer for the Ashland High cheerleaders. They're going to perform they during this timeout. Yeah. Trophy winners in the Tri Valley competition this year. Good show. An exciting exhibition. Big hand. Play resumes, second and 10 at the Fenwick 32. Crusaders ball. Nothing, I nothing. Iannarelli got a hand on that Woo! one. Knocked it down at the line. A big third down. This is not two down territory. So, Fenwick has stalled a little bit on this series. Yeah, we've seen that before though. They had a way of pulling out these uh, This team never big quits. plays. Yeah. And they show pass here. A run wouldn't shock me. But he's going to pass. Tolan. Oh, pressure. it's a screen. He's got it. Oh, he oh. had five, and then he got ten. He's got a lot more now. Fabiano. He's down to the Ashland 40. That's a 25-yard gain. Pulling a play out of Ashland's book. Oh, did it work to perfection? Design screen and... Broke a tackle, that, that set him off. They oh. had him stopped it with about a five or six yard yeah, game. Yeah, rare missed tackle the, by, by Ashland on defense. So now the Crusaders are in clocker territory at the Ashland 40, first and 10. And pretty soon the clock is gonna become a factor, 944 left in the game. So many big plays that they've converted on Bishop Fenwick. Ashland down a point. Back to the ground. This Wilson time the keeps Wilson it. keeps Jake it. Jake Tolan. Corralled. Tolan with the big, what do we call that? Uh, tackle for a loss. Behind the line of scrimmage, second and 12 coming up. I guess you'd call that a sack if because the quarterback was the one with the ball. That is, that's. Definitely a sack. Although it was a designed run. Ben. 
So again, the Crusaders very methodical, taking their time. Three receivers to the left. Oh, oh, One at the too top much of the time screen. or was there movement? I think it was a movement. Did they say offsides? Let's see if somebody lined up in the neutral zone. <laughs> Looks clean. Oh, oh he moved. Yeah, okay. it was a receiver. So they started this drive with a uh, first and 20 after the uh, blindside block penalty, and that didn't seem to slow them down. Ashland's just got to stay focused, just keep doing what they've been doing all year. He's looking deep. He's, He's open. Too far. Got behind the defense. I noticed uh, Wilson, when he misses, he misses long. So there's no chance of an interception. Yeah, he totally faked out uh, Latessa there. Got behind him. Yeah, La Latessa thought it was a curl route or something. He stopped. So. Now it's third. Third and plenty. Third and 16. Third and 17. Yeah, if you check the sticks, they gotta get all the way to the 30. And they're on the 47, the Ashland 47. Four man front for the clockers. No, clockers generally do not blitz. But this would be the time for it. They actually have a different quarterback. That's, uh, he's overthrowing them. Wow. So Wilson had to come out, and this kid is limping. That was too. Jason Romans, number 12. Romans, the sophomore backup, pressed into service, and he's coming off with a limp. Didn't see why. He just twisted something on his own. But is this the first punt of the game coming up? For Bishop Fenwick, yes. Uh, Ashland did uh, punt on their second possession. So Fenwick stopped and punting for the and very first time here in the fourth okay. period. It's the same uh, guy, number 12, Romans. That's way, looks like it's out of bounds. Yes, yeah. it is. Not 20. returnable, but not too far. Ashton's going to start. About 24 yards on yeah. the net. And we're going to start around... Yeah, 25 or? Yeah, 24, 25 yard line. Yeah, so so uh, I guess you have to say that was a good punt. Well, no return. Good for us. No, good for them. 22 yards. Yeah. No. But no return. Yeah. Which is the, uh, well, if he kicked it over his head, it would come out to the, what, the 20? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what we can do here. What do we got? Uh, we've 8 been moving the ball. 8.05. Left to play, Ashland down a point. They start with the run. Nothing much. <laughs> See if they can break Eddie. Haven't been able to since the first half. They gave Eddie two on that. One and a half, maybe. Now he's going to pass. He's, he's open. Complete. Let's First down. Letessa go across go field, Jake. field. He's in the open. One man to beat. They get he's him from around. He spins Come on, away. Jakey. Come on. He's down inside the one. Kavanaugh to Letessa. 68 yards to the one. Broke about four tackles. Quarterback and he's in. Sneak. Touchdown. And they're going to go for two here. Clockers take the lead. Uh, and they got an injured player. An 
Injured Crusader. Number 12, Jason Romans. I don't, looks like it's just cramping. Yeah. He's sitting up. He's calm, cool, and collected. But, but he's done everything. He's been defending uh, Russell the whole game. He cannot threw, get up. Now threw they, the pass. and Now they do the... Uh, he's their punter, too. So The cramping... Uh, Gives Ashland a little time to... Oh, to celebrate. A what a play. He's been doing it all year. He's oh, part the, of the... Uh, the desire. Four horsemen, four the horsemen. desire he showed on that play. And obviously the big concern when he's whipping around is you know holding on to the ball. Yes. And he did a great job protecting it. And they got him from behind. They, he broke, he well, broke they angled him off. They got him from – then the guys – that gave the other guys time to get him from behind. He broke through them, broke yeah. free of them, got all the way to the one before he finally toppled. And it was a good – Good reception to begin with. It was a little high. He had to go up and, you know, stay, keep his concentration. Great play, great play call, and a great pass right on the money from Kavanaugh. So, so they picked up on the uh, the snap, crackle, pop reference. I yes, made in that yes, yes, I okay. love that. Tommy Castle called me. I, I said, I, I, I think that was the only time I've used it all yes. year. Yes. And, um, and as and the like, clock is like to do, they like to line up quick after when they get down to the one. And, yes. Uh, I can't say exactly that I saw everything, but I'm pretty sure that Don sneaked it home. And it's yeah. 19 to 14 now. Ashland leading with an extra point try coming up. What do you do, Rob? You going for two? Oh, you, you're going for two. Um, if their I'm kicker is not, if they don't kick. Is going for one the way to go. I'll tell you what, if, if Romans is, well, he's he's got to come off unless they use a timeout. So they may use Russell against whoever's defending him because Romans has been covering Russell the whole game. And doing a pretty good job. Yeah, exactly. So that must have been part of the scouting report because they have not been doing that five, ten yard little stop <laughs> curl route to They dedicated uh, Russell. him to uh, Russell today. And a lot of teams have done that. You know, we saw well, you would think, Mike, Micah Friedman, you, said, you, you know, was say, up against him. Yeah. And he's been able to kind of match up favorably against anybody because of his size. In his good hands. Yeah, and he made that nice catch earlier. Made a couple. So here we go. Ashley and back on top. 19 to 14. And they're going for two. It yeah. comes from the three-yard the line. They're trying to make it a 21-14 game. It's a fake. Rolls out. He's open. He's got it. Bubba Gazzard. Wow. 14 points for Gazzard this afternoon. Two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. And we've seen that play a few times this year, too. So now a very symmetrical Ashland 21 and Bishop Fenwick 14 and 7.08 left to play. A seven-point lead. If it should come to it, I got to believe the game will be on the line on a two point conversion, but we got a lot of football before we ever get to that. Yeah. Clock is a retake in the lead. And now you said Chris Wilson was uh, a little gimpy at the end. He came out for a play because of an injury. So I, didn't that, see, that... I didn't see it, but uh, we okay. saw a substitute quarterback come in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just thinking that Wilson must have been nicked in some way. Wilson is 11, so number 11. I'm not expecting another onside kick. <laughs> no. Uh, you you missed it, Bob. Oh. Yeah, you'll see it on replay. It, it was probably one of the – the thing almost went backwards. <laughs> but anyways. Hard grounder. There's, there's a good one. Oh, nice 21, hop. Nice hop for them. 30. Oh, a quick move. He's going to go around the end. Oh, we cut it inside, oddly enough. And that gave the chance of the clockers to snow him under at the 30. Nine. Yep. He had some jitterbug moves. So 6.58 to go here. Ashley and back on top, 21 to 14, as they try and finish off this Cinderella season with a Division VI MIAA state championship title.
Balls spotted at the 39. And we do have a different quarterback in there, number 10. So something is definitely up with Chris Wilson. Oh! Oh, Obi Brown. David Cifuentes tracked down by OB. Number 10 is Steve Woods. He's a sophomore also, number 10. So coach uh, David Woods has had to go to his sophomores mm. here. I wonder if Steve is uh, his boy is in the game, number 10. Yeah, and Berganka coming off the field again. That's definitely a uh, an injury that could hurt the clockers. He's trying. Hand up to Cifuentes. Three. Third down and long coming up. Ian Arelli, Dwinnells, and Sean Harding. <laughs> you, can't, you can't have more weight on you at one point. Right. I think the combined weight of those three players is 800 pounds. Under six so, minutes to go so I now. I give Cifuentes credit for being able to get up. Big third down play coming up. We'll call it third and six. Third and six, and yeah, you may even be looking at two down territory, 5.39 to go. The sophomore rolls out. Left hand. It's deflected. Oh, up in the air for grabs, but it's incomplete. Jake Latessa doing it on defense. He did it on offense. Is Woods a lefty? He was on that play. Yeah. Steve Woods, number 10. The sophomore getting a chance. No, no, they're making another change here. Who they got? They may have to call it timeout. Oh, they're bringing in. Uh, he, I think Wilson's coming back. Was Wilson's that Wilson? Wilson's eleven. Oh, Wilson. Yeah, Wilson, number fourteen's back in. I could see he's limping. He's definitely hurting. Chris Wilson is fourteen. You're they're going right. to leave it up to the arm of Chris Wilson. In a passing situation, it's fourth down, and it's deflected. deflected. Incomplete. The clock is old. Ashland takes over on downs. In good field position at the Fenwick 43. 5.26 to go. Clock is leading by seven. A big defensive play. Two big defensive plays on third and fourth down. We didn't see who got that deflection, but that was huge. Wow, these these two teams both both battered and bruised and just a, a long just, season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this game alone, you know. Again, Clock has had to play one more game because of the way things worked out in Division Six this year. They go on the ground. Little stutter step move. Oh, a big run! That's a first down. That's Eddie Lopez. He started the game with that nice 42-yard run. And that keeps the clock moving. 5.18 to go in running. Down to the 33 now. And what do we got? Officials timeout. Another injury on the sideline there, possibly. Just I don't see anybody down. Now they Yeah, wind. it's Romans again with another. He's down just right by the uh, the, oh, the yard the markers. Line, yeah. He just had to roll out of bounds and Here first we go. down. We go back to the ground. That's Marloni this time. He's got four yards. He's still going. They won't. He won't go down. That's good. Keeps Runs those more legs time off churning. And Marloni, it's a big play of the game. Was that nice delayed screen for 45 yards. They couldn't capitalize on it at the time, but it definitely gave them some good field position. And, uh, and Marloni's coming off. He looks a little, a little. So did Lopez come back in? They use everybody. You oh, know? Was Braganca in there. I don't think Braganca's back in there. He seems to be kind of hurt. Lopez is in there All now. Right, he's, in there. he's back in. 
And we used uh, Maloney had the last Obi cat. Brown and he's going to pass. He's got a man open, complete at the ten. Latessa again at the ten. Another Ashland first down. Kavanaugh to Latessa. Twenty-yard play, first and ten at the eleven. Clock running, 340. This offense is just a machine. Fenwick's got to start stopping the clock. I mean, just. Well, Fenwick I mean, in a tough spot with their timeouts and the clock running. Yep. I mean, it's, it's one thing to be able to throw as well as Kavanaugh. That was sidearm. But these Latessa can catch it. Baba Gazzard catches it. Grover if it's thrown to him. Russell, there's the run to Lopez. Oh, he finds an opening. He's still He's up. Gets to the, close to the five yard line. Second down coming up. And now they burn a timeout. They had to, they, that clock is melting away. 3.04, they've got three timeouts per team per half. And that's their first of the half. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if yeah. Ashland's used any. No. Again, Ashley and marching through the playoffs with their, probably one of their most uh, least impressive games was against that East Bridgewater squad in the that opening first, round. That first, that first half was frightening. And around. you know, and, and they ended the game, they pulled ahead on the, it was the similar two point conversion play where they threw it to Gazard yeah. in the flat on a little, you know, came out of the backfield and they went up 21-14 and held on. Mark McKay, Coach Mark McKay told me they put five men uh, in the box for the second half, and that made East Bridgewater try to go wide, and they couldn't do it. And that's yep. how Ashland took over that game. Yeah, because the whole first half, we kept saying they got to do something different. And yeah, because they ran, they literally ran 25 out of 26 plays or whatever they ran. Using they the, only threw one play using the RPO and that the run pass option, and that actually helped them because when they played Rockland, it was a very similar offense, and they were able to dominate them. And then again, uh, Old Rochester, here we go, second and six. Lopez, <laughs> he got a yard or two. Yeah. And now the timeout is called by Fenwick. Coach David Woods using his second timeout. And we're down to 2.59 left in the game. And the boys from Peabody are down to their last timeout. And the Clockers are knocking on the door. And the Clockers don't want to have to leave it up to their defense. All they need is punch it in here or even a field goal by Andre. A field goal would be huge. Would make it a two-possession game. Granted, Bishop Fenwick seems to be struggling on offense now with uh, all the injuries to their top players, including Chris Wilson, who Chris valiantly was tried to come in on that fourth down play, but. Uh, uh, Chris had a good game today. He did. You know, he, did. he showed a lot of resiliency. You know, he, uh, he had a, a tough time in the first period passing the ball, but boy, did he stay with it. And he yeah. made some huge like completions. Said. Yeah, the easy ones he couldn't do and the, the tough ones. I don't know the, if it was nerves, injury, or what it was. Could be but cold. here we here we go. One of the biggest third downs possibly of the Ashland Clocker season. They could ice it here. Kavanaugh with Lopez lined up to his left. Fakes the handoff. Uh -oh. Goes to Quick. Russell. Touchdown! Touchdown! A quick release. He was covered, but he had the inside position. Dom let it go. And Kevin Russell brought it in. What a fitting, fitting end. Clockers celebrating. They can't celebrate too much. There's still 2.53 to left. But they're ahead by 13 points with the Augustinelli extra point coming up. A snap back ball down. It's up. It's good. Timeout on the field. 2.53 to play. Ashland 28, Bishop Fenwick 14. Three minutes left in the Division Six Super Bowl. 
And the Clockers have a 14 point lead. Kicking off to the Crusaders. And Coach McKay is fired up in the middle of that huddle. He's telling, and, us, and he's he telling his boys this game isn't over. We've been there before. Yeah. We've been there before. We've seen stranger things happen. One thing I'll say about this, uh, this Ashland team, they used to say it about the Red Sox when they won the championship two years ago. They add on. You know? They add on. You have to. You have to. And, and they don't settle for the lead. They add on. That was an impressive drive there. I see, I see some old uh, Ashland yeah, that's, must jackets. Be the, it's probably class of 95. I don't yeah. think it's 78. Right. So, what is it? Here we go. Hard ground ball. Yeah. Mishandled. Picked up at the 25. He lopes it out to the 37. And Fenwick is going to start there with 246 to go. Trailing by two touchdowns and two extra points. And I think the uh, clockers... Can taste it. Let's see who's going to quarterback uh, Fenwick uh, because uh, they need passing. Uh, I see somebody coming in limping, and it is Chris Wilson. He's probably saying he's got a pass. He's like, hey, I've been there all season. Yeah. Let me. I'll be. Let sore. me throw it. I'll be sore after the game either way. Right. He's not going to run. He's just going to throw it. So let's rest it on my arm. To see uh, Ashland back a little further. They go with the run. Yeah. And it's a good one. Yep. And he stays in bounds to get a first down and then goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Good play. Very smart play. Costa Beachin, number nine, I believe, on that, Gary. I think it was. Was it, was nine? it I think it was Sefuentes again. What do you read? Yeah, he's a Eight. freshman. Yeah. yeah. Eight, not nine. Those bunched up numbers. Unless he's a guy with a high speed. The whole Ashland fan section standing. Clock stop, 2.38 to go. Ball hard at midfield, first down Crusaders. It's a deep shotgun, isn't it, Rob? Yeah. A five he, and a half yard shotgun. He needs the protection. He can't scramble. Over the middle, on target, complete. Hook and lateral. Oh, oh what a play. It can Fabiano. And but a fumble. Now he loses it. They pick it up. It's but, advanced. Yeah, that was intentional. Is it loose again? ashley has got it, though. It's loose again. Let's see who they give it to. Clark is not excited enough. Not to mention it should come back because yeah, he intentionally fumbled it. They're, they're giving it to Fenwick. I don't know if they get the forward fumble. Yeah, they, why are they giving the ball on the 17? Shouldn't it be coming back? Wow. They count it. 2.23 to go. Oh. Fenwick in business on a big hook and ladder play. Now mm -hmm. the ball's loose again. Was he trying to spike it? That was the other quarterback. The uh, sophomore came in for the spike. I don't know what I saw there. That was a spike. Second and yeah, 10. Let's see. Here's the replay again. But it looked like he, he fumbled it intentionally. The hook, and ladder. the hook and ladder. The hook and ladder worked to perfection. First time we've seen it work this year. Saw it in one other game. I can't, I think Fenwick's it was Old got it Rochester. got all the way down to the 16. It, well, the game ended on that hook and ladder. Yeah, they, yeah. Did it, they did it earlier in the game than they, where it was successful, but here we go. Left-handed pass, open. end zone, touchdown. So just like that, in less than a minute, Fenwick back in the game. The score goes to 28 to 20 with the extra point try coming up. Stephen Woods and quarterback lofted that one to a wide open uh, receiver or was Stephen Woods the receiver? Jason Romans. Romans came, comes back from, from the injured the, list yeah. to make that catch from Stephen Woods. And the Crusaders say we're not dead yet. I think they're going to go for two. Because I think their kicker is Romans, who's uh, 
Oh, no, so Fuentes is their kicker. But yes. you got to go for two anyways. He's not having a good day. And, and they if they have score again, them. they'll go for two and try and tie it up if they get a chance. So Woods to pass. Lofts it. End zone. Com complete. 28-22. The Crusaders cut the clocker lead to six. It's, a, it's amazing. As well as this team has played, they've had these momentary lapses. So now the pressure on the Ashland uh, receiving team to handle this cleanly and the pressure on the offense to get a first down to close this one out. I believe the Crusaders have a timeout left. I think they burned two down here. Scoreboard shows one, so I, I think yeah. you're correct. Where do you see that? Is it up there? I think oh, it's yeah. under, this, yeah. the, under the uh The clock is with all yeah. three left. So, so it's going to come right down to the last play of the game. So one of the biggest kickoffs. <laughs> there was a big third down before. This is the biggest kickoff. It's got to be an onside, doesn't it? Yeah, it has to be an onside kick. We've seen it go against them before. It's a hard one, a good one. And it's one fielded covered. cleanly. I think it was Matt Neal. It was Matt Neal. He's done it before and he does it again. So I'll tell you what, that makes up for the mishandled snap on the first extra point. He's been there all season. so uh, Punting as punting well. Place to, holding. Yeah. And Matt's a, Matt's a junior. And he's also quarterback the Clockers on occasions. Ashland's at their own 49, 210 to so they go. Need, they got a six point lead they're protecting. Yeah. Fenwick with one timeout. It's just a matter of protecting the ball. They don't have to do anything fancy. They Two go hands on the on ground. It. Eddie Lopez. He's got three. Fenwick burns their last timeout. So we got a little bit of drama here. Clarks, of course, have to protect the ball. A first down seals it. If you're just tuning in, because uh, I don't know why you'd just be tuning in. Well, if you just got home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it remember now. We're not live. I know. <laughs> so uh, we're happy to have this uh, game, a record of this game for our own station, WACA TV Ashland. And we thank the MIAA for giving us the nice facility, the nice booth here at Gillette Stadium so we can record the uh, game for posterity. Yeah. So when we come back from this timeout, it's going to be second and seven. Bishop Fenwick out of timeouts. 2.04 to go. A first down would clinch it. And as it stands, we can run about a minute 20, minute 25 off the clock just by running the ball. And they Kavanaugh keeps, keeps it. it. He's, He's got, got, a, got first a first down. down! And the game is over. <laughs> Whoa! Unexpected. Kavanaugh on the keeper takes it to the Fenwick 37. It's first down. Ashland. Yeah, a little... A little fake handoff, and that's it. And that should be it. Victory we're, formation. We're down to a minute 44, and running clock is in no hurry to take this la these last few formation. snaps. They did it. Coach McKay practically in the huddle. <laughs> he's, he's lined up as a wide receiver. <laughs> And they're going to take a timeout, I think, with like a, yeah. With 116, they take a timeout. I think he, oh, what a, what a nice gesture. He wants Don Massaro to get in the game with his separate, with his dislocated shoulder. That's why he's calling the timeout. The clockers did take a snap, I believe, did they? No, no, they called the timeout with one so second left. So it stays left, first so. down, yeah. First down and... With 116 on the clock. 
And again, Dom, Dom Massaro, so integral in this whole uh, championship run. All the senior captains on, on the field. Dom Massaro lined up as a wide receiver. Big part of the clock is all season long. And he took part in the Super Bowl, lining up as the wide out. The seniors on this club, Jake Merloni, Jake Latessa, Brian Gazzard, Kevin Russell, Dominic Cavanaugh, Brandon Grover, Josh Troutman, Theo Kanovalich, Mason Dushi. Before, before you go through the whole list, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention number 70 at center, Joey Harrington. I, I don't know if I've mentioned him more than once or twice all season, but he's done a phenomenal a job. And uh, he, he hasn't gotten the credit that he deserves. And there they go, celebrating. Ryan Dwinell is also a senior. Tyler Maleski, S.A. Gonzalez, Dom Massaro, Colin Dagg, Jake Tolan, Rigel Brown, O.B. Brown, Eddie Lopez, Ashad Ahmed, and Eddie Braganca, and Andre Agostinelli. Clock ticking down, 10 seconds. The boys lining up to shake hands. Three, two, one, it's all over. At Gillette Stadium, Ashland is the Super Bowl champion of Division VI and the winner of the Aganis Trophy. The final score, Ashland 28, Bishop Fenwick 22. Crusaders uh, made it interesting with that late touchdown, but the Clockers entering the fourth period, trailing 14 to 13, put two touchdowns on the board. To pull away from uh, Bishop Fenwick in what was a very tight and hotly contested battle here at the Razor on December 7th, 2019. Mm. And the team of we destiny, get out of here. the team of destiny has done it again. They did it. We gotta they leave our it. booth for the next team, for the next game coming up. What a season. But a fantastic season, uh, dedicated to two pretty special boys, PJ Ferrier and Jake Silver comes to an end just as we wanted it to, Rob. Yeah. With the Super Bowl championship, the team of destiny uh, comes through. And the Clockers have won their second lifetime Super Bowl here in 2019. The final score for the final time, Ashland 28, Bishop Fenwick 22 for Rob Silver, Todd Carter, Connor Douglas. I'm Bob Thacker. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.